Hey, aloha. Good morning, everyone. Um, come on in. I told you guys the other day in my post that I was going to go live and share a bit of the story that I am dubbing Hey Ma. <laughs> hey Ma, the story. Um, I can't say how much, express how much my family and I are just so appreciative and thankful um, for each one of you who have kept us in your, who are keeping, who have kept and are keeping us, let me close this Bible, it's fluttering, um, us in your thoughts and in your prayers, uh, believing that the name and blood of Jesus reign over our family, and I can't thank you guys enough. You have really been um, a source of support um, for us. Uh, it felt appropriate that I not wait until I got back to the mainland to give um, this um, this update, uh, a, a recap, maybe answer some of the questions that you guys may have that I know I, I had um, in this whole situation. And, and so it felt more appropriate that I, um, that I would do it here from the lovely island of Oahu uh, because it just felt like that. Uh, and so before we get started, if you guys, if you guys have been following Delilah's downloads for some time, uh, you'll be used to me kind of panning out uh, pictures of the island so you, you can check it out. But here on my personal page, I, I know I've had to have done it while I was living, living here. And so, um, going to, hey Kevin, um, going to, uh, just pan out so you guys can see. I've, I've chosen to share this story, uh, here from the island. Um, so behind me are, and it, it never gets old. I'll say, coming back here, I'll never not want to be here um this will be some place that i think me and my family will come back to for years um it's always home to us so behind us we have the uh, we have a mountain range back here actually it's the mountain range where jurassic park was shot um so i'm going to get into the story in a bit but just wanted to kind of set some context of where i'm sitting how i'm feeling um and things of that nature and then in front of me um, is the shore. You actually got Chinaman's Hat right there. Um, if you've ever been to the island of Oahu, you're familiar with that. But just it's, it's just gorgeous. And so this is where, from where I will share the story of Hey Ma, of Hey Ma. And so felt appropriate again that I'm sitting here, that I would sit here and and give the account. And again, just a big thank you to all of you guys who have um, who have held us down in this time and are still praying for us. And so let me get into a, um, get into the story. Uh, I, I won't have some answers for, for some of you. I know this is a very uncommon uh, situation that you've seen me kind of walk through, but just wanted to share a little bit. I know some folks are wondering, well, what happened and how did it happen and where it happened and all of that kind of stuff. But I want to sh share some of that with you. Um, so that you, A, so that you know, but B, so that you also get the testimony of how God just moved through this thing and how he's faithful. Um, and so I want to share it. I want to share the story, but I, I just also want to give reverence and honor to God. So hang on with me for a bit. We're going to walk through the story. Uh, and so, and this is, hey, ma, hey, ma, the story as I know it right now, because it is, it is a, um, active living story. Um, so in April, uh, April woke up one day and my oldest son was gone. Dekente, DK woke up one day and he was just gone. Like I was literally calling for him and his brother, Deontay Dekente, come downstairs and take out the trash. No response. He was just gone. Hey cousin. Hey T. He was just gone. And so I'm like, well, he's a grown man, so maybe he found a girl in the area. And so maybe he's going to just be home earlier. Came home from work, still no DK. To shorten the story, it was about two weeks before I heard from DK. Um, in those two weeks, you know, we're in Jersey at that time. I don't know if he's in Jersey. I have no idea where he is. I, I don't even understand what's really going on at that point. And, uh, um, and most times through this entire account, I understand what I don't understand actually what's going on but uh, so the Easter and so the day before Easter or a couple days before Easter I get notification that he has a change of address and it's to Hawaii and so I'm like oh so he's gone back to the island that's peculiar it's uncommon 
um and so reached out to our church family here like hey if you happen to think you see dk on the island like don't dismiss that it might be him and so easter got a um got a call there's so many testimonies i i don't know this might be a whole book but I, i'm willing to chop up each piece of this at some point if anybody's really interested um because there was a word of god in that season Easter Sunday that told me he was in the house of his father and I somehow out of the blue he shows up at the church here in Hawaii calls me we know he's okay first time we heard from DK since he left two weeks after he left April uh, don't hear from DK again for a month and and that takes us to May again he shows up at church um, talk to him convinced him like hey you know it might be time for you to go sit down and talk to somebody um, like mental mental health professional, maybe it's time for you to go sit down and talk to somebody. He's like, yeah, my, you know, I think you're right. Um, and that was the last time I talked to my baby or heard from my baby until um, just a couple days ago. And so, you know, just um, sometime in, it was sometime in April before we even got to the second account that um, God just told me I, he was ministering to me one morning, like, look, this is how we're about to do this. And he took me to Philippians 4, 6 through 8. And he anchored me in 6. Like you will be anxious for absolutely nothing. You will be anxious for absolutely nothing. Not even this. You'll be anxious for nothing but in everything. With prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Just let your petition be made known to me. And a peace, my peace, that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind. And I don't know if you guys know what a rhema word is, but this was such a rhema for me. Um, in that God actually showed me, and I'm going to need y'all to, to uh, walk with me in this because you're going to have to stretch your faith with this one. He showed me, like when it said, guard your a peace that surpasses all understanding to guard my heart and mind. He showed me a guard, like physically, like in the spirit realm. <coughs> He showed me a guard, a physical angel, like big burly angel, not some little fluffy angel, but a big burly angel who was standing in front of my heart and standing in front of my mind like I am here to guard your heart and mind. I am the peace of God here to guard your heart and mind. Because a lot of people were just like, how are you even breathing? Like, why are you not kicking over rocks and everything trying to find him? And I'm like, God told, God told me not to. God told me he has DK and he has me he has me in the season too and so throughout this entire time that's really what's anchored me um i've had nights absolutely where i roll up roll over in the middle of the night and i'm just crying out like i, I haven't seen my baby i want to see my baby and god's like i got you i got you i got you and i got him um Oh my God, you guys know I've moved, I've been promoted through this season, like all kind of stuff has happened through this season. Um, I got, to, uh, there's so many little nuggets. Oh my God, I got to Texas, that's why I brought that up. I got to Texas in like September, um, hadn't heard from DK, and every now and again I would email, you know, just like, hey, I'm thinking about you, I miss you, I love you. We didn't have a phone number, there's no way to contact him, like, there's no way. Oh, July, so July I came down, I came here, I came to the island guys like you're not there on a rescue mission but i want you to just be there and make yourself available and file the police report and so i came and i filed the police report and my loving family here on the islands like okay so what are we doing and i'm like i'm standing god is like just stand and just make myself available and i didn't see dk but i opened up the police report i didn't do the missing person file or um, um form until uh October and so I came here in July filed the missing person report made myself available didn't see DK okay um, September moved to Texas and I went into Texas um, prayer and, and prayer and fasting right I'm going into a new season and so I went into Texas in prayer and fasting and and while I was praying and fasting I remember uh, my cousin, my cousin was putting me up in, at the time um, while I was waiting on corporate housing and I was sitting at her table and I was praying and I was praying for DK. Again, this is going to cause y'all to have to stretch your, your, your faith here and, and, and know that God moves in the realm of the spirit as well as the earthly realm. And I was sitting there and the um, Holy Spirit was like, I don't need you to pray about this. I need you to get up and physically walk him out. Because I could see my son being held in the enemy's camp. 
and the Holy Spirit's like, I need you to get up and go get them. So I got up and I got up from the kitchen table and I walked into what looked and felt like a fortress. Um, and I went in and I saw DK and he said, hey, Ma. And I said, give me your hand. And I walked him out. I walked him out of that fortress. Now this this timeline is important because I've learned something in the last couple of week, uh, last couple of days on what was actually happening in September. Um, and I walked him out, and um, he was like, "Thanks, ma." And that was it. I walked him out. I said, "Give me your." I went in. I said, "He said, hey, ma." I said, "Give me your hand." I walked him out of this 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 fortress that the enemy was trying to keep him in, and he's just like, "Thanks, ma." Um, so a point there is you got to go in if you're going to rescue people like you need to go into the spirit realm and rescue them. If you're going to like um, uh, heal, help heal and be the hands and feet of God, like you need to be we need to be binding these things. So I had to go in and bind the strong man and keep them locked up in order to get him and pull him out. And so so that happened. And so then you guys all know in October, um, I put the stuff on social media like, hey, my son is missing because I'm like, OK, Lord, like. I'm going to need you to help me out. <laughs> I'm going to need you to help me out here. Like, I want to see my baby. I want to see my baby. Um, and so HPD, right, within 12 hours of putting it on, HPD, I came back and told you guys he, they had found him. But they were like, you know, since he's an adult, we can't give his information because it's private. And we just, just know he's not homeless. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Just know he's not homeless. But um, we found him. And it's like, okay, all right, well, that gives me a, a, a form of natural peace. And I'm still standing in faith that God says this peace, supernatural, that guards my heart and mind. He got me. Um, and, it's, and it's well. And so I left it. I left it at that. I didn't go. I didn't go in, turning over rock, block, bricks and rocks um, to, to find DK. I just, I just left it there. Just like, okay, Lord, you're working. I know you're working. You're promise, you promised me you're working. You got it. Oh my God, it's so many little stories, guys. It's so many little, oh my God, just everywhere. Like, guys, like, I'm here, I'm here, I got this, I'm doing this. Um, even though I couldn't see DK, the way God just ministered to me in this season. And so, um, how did I get here? How did I get here this weekend? There's so much to share, um, but how did I get here this weekend? So this week, the Monday, it just came upon me like, you need to hire a private investigator. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, because I was pleading and honest with God. There's no need to be lying to God. I'm like, look, Lord, I need to see my son. Like, I, I can't. It's it's going to be February. He's been gone since April. I haven't seen him. I haven't smelled him. I haven't touched him. This is my firstborn baby. Like, what is happening? And so Monday I woke up. I reached out to my sister here on the island. Like, hey, do you know any private investigators? She's like, yeah. So I called the private investigator. Within 12 hours, I got an account. And it was not a good account. I got an account. Um, so, but this was no. So this was late Tuesday because I was on my way to um, new member uh, service class at my new church in Texas. And the private investigator called and was like, "DK was found wandering um, in Y and I, basically not in his right mind. This was the account, uh, not in his right mind, and he was taken to um, a sober living place." And I was like what <laughs> surely that's not about to continue and so i um and so i i, I went on I, I was on my way to to the new member class i called my auntie because i was stand, and y'all need people that's another thing you need people you need um believers who can stand with you through hard times because sometimes you're gonna be in you're not gonna break but sometimes you're gonna be in and you're gonna need somebody who's gonna be there with you and so i called my auntie as i was still driving to church i, I didn't pull over anything i was still driving to church and i'm like t this is what they're saying and she's like, we're just, we're believing in faith. God gave you a word. Like she's standing for me because at this point I'm like, my baby is somewhere wandering is what these people are saying. She's like, you're going to go in your new class. You're going to go in your class and you're going to know what to do. And so went in the new class. Oh my God. This whole story in that went in the new class. My youngest baby was with me. Um, and uh, he gave a whole testimony at church on how God has called him to serve at this particular church. Uh, and God just told me in that moment, like, this is what I'm doing with your children. Even the ones you cannot see, I am still being faithful. And so, okay, anyway, so I, and I come out and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to the island. Like, he's somewhere wandering. Oh, this this is a wrap. Like, Lord, I, 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 I got to go. 
And so came home, talked to Kenneth. Kenneth's like, yeah. And so got on the plane uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, call call my people Tuesday before I came. It's like, hey, I need a place to stay. I need a I need a car. I need all of this stuff. And they they just catch me, right? This is home. When I come, I come home. And so um, met me at the airport. Gave me a vehicle. I head out headed out to Wyanai. <laughs> um, talked to the police. They were of no help. Your baby out here. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Landed. Landed. Called the private investigator, and he said that the account was inaccurate. He said the account wasn't accurate. Um, DK was not wandering. The YNI police had just come in contact with him, and DK told them that he was staying at a um, sober living home. Uh, so two things with that. One was, well, praise God, my baby wasn't just wandering around. But two, the second thing was, well, if they didn't drop him off, then they don't know where he is. So now what I was hoping to do was land, and somebody was going to give me an address so I could go. There was no address. So okay, so I hit I hit the road, jump on the H1, go out to Why Not. I'm talking to the police. I'm driving around. I don't see DK. Um, Thursday morning, I, I I give up because of course they're like you know before it gets dark, come from over there. And so I I come from over there and um, Thursday morning I wake up and I'm praying and I'm like, look Lord, I don't want to be out here knocking on doors and 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 handing out. I don't want to do all that. I don't want to do that in my own might. I don't want to do that in my own strength. If you're not going to go with me, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. You're a God that produces results. And so if you go, there's results. If I go, there's just frustration. I, I don't want to do that. Um, and so I headed out Thursday morning, was going to stop by the police department, the missing person's office and say, just y'all need to stop tripping and give me the address uh, where y'all saw my baby. Um, but as I was pulling up, one of my sisters called and was like, hey, what's, what are you doing? Are you on island? Welcome home. And I was telling her, hey, I'm sitting here in front of HPD about to walk in and told her what I was doing. She's like, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You know, let me make a couple phone calls for you. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and, and I'm like, well, actually, you know, the piece that surpasses all understanding is guarding my heart and mind. So how about I just go over here to Lily High and get me a loco moco while you call around and do whatever. So just chill, be at peace. Like, cause God was telling me to stand, understand, and resound. Stand in the peace of God, understand what the Holy Spirit was saying and resound. You would spell it like resound, but resound, like allow my actions to be a resounding of his word. Just do what he's saying, do like listen and just do and so i'm standing understanding and re-sounding the word of god and so i go to lily high people are calling around doing things on my behalf and now i have nothing to do because i'm like well if he's moving right if god is doing things through other people then what am i gonna do because i was planning to go knocking on doors and handing out flyers and so i went back out to y and i and i rode around and i rode around and didn't see dk nobody called with a report of anything didn't find dk on thursday and so, okay, uh, all right, then I'm going to wait to fri private investigator call to say, hey, I've been giving you grace, you know, since we've been working together, I haven't been charging you, but if we go keep doing this, I'm going to need to charge. And I was like, okay, well, let's wait until Saturday. I'm like, let's wait until Saturday. On Friday, I will print print. I will print flyers. I will plaster Y&I and, I and, and Makaha with, with flyers, and I will talk to the homeless because I talked to one of um, one of the guys on the island, and he was going to go with me Friday, uh, so I would be safer, so when I was talking to strangers and people maybe not that healthy, um, that he would be with me, and so I told the private investigator, we'll wait till Saturday. Okay, so we're waiting till Saturday, Friday, I'm going to do it in my, in, in my own, but walking in the spirit. Okay. And so I get all, I stop at Office Max, I get all, I print 50 flyers, I print 50 flyers, um, that the flyer you guys saw on social media, I, I posted it, and then I printed 50 of those, bought tape and tax, and I'm going to go to Long's and CVS and Taco Bell, and I'm going to just plaster this area with these flyers. Somebody going to unearth my baby. Somebody going to unearth my baby. <laughs> like, this is a wrap. Um, and so, went out to the, 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 um, the, um, the homeboy, the homeboy that was helping me, that's what's coming up, the homeboy that was helping me, he actually lives in that area out in Makaha, and so, um, went out, got my, uh, flyers, went out to their house, um, and he, we got in the car, I got in the car, and I was driving out, um, uh, but before we were driving out, let me, let me take you back, so my, my girl who called as I was going to the police department on Thursday, she sent me a text that morning, yes, that's very important, Friday morning, she sent me a text, and she's like, hey, here are a couple more places. Because mind you, I had like 25 places already. All halfway homes, recovery homes. I'm going to find them. Um, 
And so Kalei sends me a, a list of additional homes like, hey, just take these two. And she's like, and start with this one. And she gives me my brother's keeper. Um, start with this one. Call this one. And I'm like, okay. So I call my brother's keeper. This is Friday morning before I even leave in the house. I'm going to get back to being with um, Joy out in Makaha. Um, and I call my brother's keeper and they're like, uh, we, we're not in the services anymore. We don't offer those kind of services, but here's a number you might want to try. So I'll call the number. Nobody answers. I leave a message. Okay, I'm out. I'm now going to go get the flyers, drive an hour out to, because I'm staying in Kaneohe. I drive an hour out to Makaha, uh, meet up with Joey. We're in the car. And so we're about to leave his property, uh, and the phone rings. Now, all this time, it's been, we can't give you any information because it's private information. Um, I don't have an address. I'm waiting on somebody to give me an address. Like, I done told God, like, look, Lord, no. I want you to tell me where he is. I don't want to be out here knocking on doors, but I'm going to just take steps of what I know to do and trust that you're going to um, guide my steps. You say that the steps of the righteous, you, you direct the order, the steps of the righteous, and you say you're a light unto my path. So I'm just reminding him of his word. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to go in motion, um, but I'm looking for you to direct my steps. So the phone rings. Joy and Joy's in the car. Me and Joy have just only been in the car like two minutes. Phone rings. It's a guy. He's like, hi, you called my phone earlier. And I'm like, yeah, uh, I was, my brother's keeper told me to, um, my brother's keeper told me to give you a call, and so I just gave you a call, you know, and he's like, well, who's your brother? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm not looking for my brother, I'm looking for my son, Dekente Bartlett. <laughs> ah, glory to the Most High God. I'm like, I'm looking for my son, Dekente Bartlett. And y'all, this man just starts to say, Oh, DK has been with me for like five to six months. He's doing so great. He's such a blessing. He's working two jobs. Um, he's so smart and he's so smart in the things of the word. And he's teaching the guys in the house the Bible. Um, and he's healthy. And he just went on. I'm, I'm just sitting in the car, just mouth open, jaw drop. Like, this is not an inquiry. Like, this guy is telling, this guy is telling me that my son is healthy and well. And I'm like, can I see him? Because it's been so private. Like, people won't give me addresses or anything. He's like, are you clean and sober? I'm like, yeah. He's like, of course. He gives me the address, y'all. And DK is literally like four minutes from where I am in Makaha. Hmm. Not only is my son, my son found, my son is found healthy. He is found getting all the help he needs, and he is found being a minister of God's word. So I roll up, of course, right? And I roll up, and there's some a couple of the guys at the home. They're standing outside in the front. And if you've ever been to like a recovery home or known anybody in recovery, you know it's they're not all, always that appealing to the eye. So I roll up, and there's these different kind of dudes, looking dudes, standing in front of the house. And I get up and they're smiling. They're different and uncommon looking, but they're just smiling. I can tell the joy, just the joy in them. And they're just like, we told them, we told them you're here. And so they go in and they get them and everything. And when DK comes out of that door and I look up and I'm just looking at it and I'm trying to, you know, I'm not going to emotionally explode. I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm a, Lord, I'm going to try to keep it together. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try to get so. DK walks up and he looks at me and he says those two magic words. Hey, Ma. And he walked up on me and I just grabbed him and I just loved him and I just kissed him and I just prayed, just glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. And you guys saw the picture. His hair was cut. He was looking healthy. I mean, it was just like, God is amazing. God is amazing. And so we spent about 30 minutes together and he ran down a few things like he's talking to his therapist. He's taking his meds. He's in his word. He's working two jobs. He's dot, 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 dot. And I'm just like, you know, I don't want to be overbearing because there was a reason that it happened this way. There was a reason that he didn't didn't want to or didn't felt he couldn't call. There was a reason. So I'm not going to meet this with, well, why, why didn't you and what didn't you and how da, 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 and I don't like, no, hey, can can we get together tomorrow? What's your schedule? Like maybe we can sit down and have a bite to eat on Saturday and 
he's like, oh, like, of course, like, it's no big deal. Like, he hasn't been missing for almost a year. But I'm like, dude, I, I want to say some stuff, but I'm not going to say some stuff because God has told me, like, I don't, I don't need you to go in there on a, on a rescue mission. I don't, I don't, I don't need you to go in there and try to redo or undo or fix something that I'm doing. I just need you. Oh my God, that morning, God had told me about birthing. And he was like, I'm birthing something in DK. And Delilah, if you remember, when you had physical babies, it was pretty much you, the person who was given birth, and the father in the room. I am in the room with Dikente. I need you to understand your position as the grandma of this thing that I'm birthing in DK. It's not for you to father and it's not for you to mother. It's for you to be available when I need you to be available. Don't come in here trying to control. He got me right together. Don't cut. Look. I know you <laughs> don't come in here trying to control. And so as I'm talking to him, I'm just like, okay, and all right. And you know, well, let's, let's get together and everything. And my baby told me about how he appears at a time where he was homeless and to, to hear my son say something like homeless. I'm like, I always have a home for you. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm like, okay. And he's just running it down. But y'all, God is so good. And just because I think um, healing looks a certain kind of way or restoration should look a certain kind of way doesn't doesn't always mean it it should be that way you know we could get so locked in on do it my way that we miss God's way um, so my baby is here uh, he is he is on the island I, I we, I'm, I'm leaving him here I, I'm leaving him here he is doing well um, we've had some good conversation on what are his boundaries? What does he need me to do in this season? And uh, look, homie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to call me every night. This dude put out a phone while we were talking. I'm like, you got a phone and you ain't call me? Okay, but oh, okay, all right, uh, okay, Lord, oh, I got it. Um, but how I, I'm gonna need him to be in contact with me, and um, I'm gonna get. We're going to link up in a minute. We're going to church together this morning. Yesterday we hung out, and I saw my baby. And I saw my baby. God allowed me because God could have did that whole thing. He could have did that whole thing and still work through DK and not allow me, allow me to see it. But he was so gracious. He was so gracious to allow me to see it because he told me to believe him that he had my baby and he was working through my baby. But he, he honored a mother's heart and knew I wanted to see him and he let me see him. And he let me see him. He is so faithful. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. Even when you don't see him working, he is literally at work. He is faithful. If we would only believe him. He had me praying for Dikente's ministry while he was missing. Like, and he wasn't missing while I couldn't see him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praying for the ministry, praying for the guys on the other side of him, praying for the family of the men in his sphere of influence, it's praying for the wives of the men of his influence, had me covering them because he was already working. I didn't need to see it, but he allowed me to see it. So, hey, Ma, the story. And you know, people don't get it. They're like, well, he should have called you, and that's not right. And why didn't he call you? And da da da. Like, hey, no, that's not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If it was needed to be done that way, praise the Lord. The, Daniel walked into a lion's den. And I don't know no account in the Bible where it's all fluffy and, and nobody gets hurt and nobody's feelings are hurt or hearts are broken. Every account I know of something grand that the Lord has done has trial. <laughs> We just have to be faithful. I don't know what it is you're going through. I don't know who's trying to distract you and get you off track. Know that the promises of God over your life are yes and amen. Know that. Know that he is a restorer. Not just restoring to your limited mindset on what you believe restoration is. Restoring to him. Restoring to kingdom. Restoring to purpose. Restoring the stuff you don't even know. You didn't create. I didn't create Dikente. God created Dikente. God allowed me to birth Dikente. He knows what he's. He knows the original programming. He knows the original model. 
Let God be God. Let God be God. But y'all, I'm so giddy. Y'all know I'm gonna be at church today acting a it shall not robo shit it a bossy like it shut out I got my see no robo shit it a like I I I I can't even I can't I might cut up and do a whole run through the church I might cut up and do a whole entire run in the church because he's faithful my baby's alive he's healthy he's ministering the word of God He's getting the help he needs. It's all good. It's all good. And when I tell y'all that I was walking in faith, I'm telling you the truth though. I was I was walking in faith. I am walking in faith. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am walking in faith. When I pulled away from DK on Friday, I have to tell y'all though, it was like a whole nother liter of oxygen became available to me. Because even though I was walking and believing and got like all of that was happening, like real life, like a mother physically walking out, I can't touch my son. Like that don't even make sense. I can't call him. Birthdays have gone through. Christmas has gone by. All of this stuff. And like I've never not called him on his birthday. None of this is making sense to me. But it was like a whole liter of oxygen. So I'm like, okay, Lord. So if I've been able to not only survive, if you've been able to allow me not only to survive but thrive in this season, what happens now that I have a whole nother liter of oxygen available? What happens now that I know how to pray more strategically for the things that you're doing in DeKente's life? It's just going to be good. But I know you guys have been holding me down, holding us down. Um, and I just wanted to come and, and at least give you a synopsis and that's that's short synopsis of what's happened in the last y'all it's been eight months. Um it's been eight months. And I was like, We moved <laughs> we moved to, we don't live in New Jersey anymore. We moved to say like yeah, moved to Texas. I'm like, Yeah, will you when you whenever you come visit or come home or whatever God is doing, it's not Jersey anymore. It's it's Texas. We're in Texas. <laughs> We're in Texas. God is faithful. God is good. I wanted to just come back and let you guys know um, that he's doing wonderful things. And also as a minister to God, um, that I truly believe that it's by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony that people are broken free. So I decree and declare uh, that um, that um, spirits of fear, spirits of anxiety are broken now in the name of Jesus. I, do, I release and loose a spirit of peace over your life that the great Jehovah, um, the great Jehovah hmm, Shalom, let's go with Shalom, that the great Jehovah Shalom reigns peace over you, your mind, your heart, and your body. I thank God that you have a firm belief that the plans that he has made for you will avail, that he has a plan for you not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. I thank God that he has gone before you and his grace and glory are your rear guard. I just thank him for you. And I thank him that today when you get up from this video and you walk away, your steps are different. Your breath and breathing are different different your belief is different that you've raised yourself up to a higher dimension in God you see the mirror this is a miracle this is a miracle people like to discount stuff as circumstance situation and coincidence this is a miracle of a living God this is a wonder of a living God God is still doing miracles he's still giving signs and he's still doing wonders and I speak it over your life in Jesus name i love you guys and i will talk to you guys later you got any questions you want to know how god talked or move i'm i'm available to talk through it um and i love you and i'll talk to you guys later i gotta go to be at church with my baby take care